Is it too late to stop our waste from choking our planet? These people don't think so. There's been this level of ruthlessness about it that it doesn't matter what ends up in the waste. It's a huge environmental problem. Land, soil, water, labor, and capital also get wasted. We are in a crisis, make no doubt about it. These are the 2023 Earthshot Prize finalists, giving Earth their best shot to build a waste-free world. I feel in, in some way that the universe has been preparing me for this my, my whole life. Going into the Navy as a very young officer turned me into an environmentalist. I boarded ships smuggling oil out of Iraq against UN sanctions, and that gave me a real appreciation for the geopolitical dynamics of, of oil, and I got to see the impact of humanity on our oceans. My name is Peter Majoranowski, and I am the CEO of CERC. Roughly one garbage truck per second is going to landfill full of clothing around the world. We're producing over 100 million tons of new clothing every year. The impact of this industry on the planet is massive. It's roughly 8 to 10 percent of annual greenhouse gas emission. That's more than aviation and marine combined. Less than 1 percent of clothing today is recycled back into clothing. And the main challenge is because of polycotton blends synthetics, plastics that are purposely engineered and blended with cotton. It's very difficult to recycle. You also have problems with water usage for growing cotton, for dyeing clothing, the pollution that goes into waterways from plastics, from dyes. We need a solution to get it back into circulation so we can stop extracting natural resources from nature. My name is Nidhi Pant. I was born in the Himalayas to a family of farmers. Climate change pushed my family to migrate to Mumbai, where I grew up. India loses food worth $14 billion annually due to storage, handling, transportation, and sometimes just due to the appearance of it. Untimely rains, heat waves, and climate change has led to 30 to 40 percent of the total harvest of the farmers to be of lower grade. This lower grade produce is cosmetically damaged but nutritionally intact, but leads to a lower price for farmers in the market. Sometimes the cost of transportation as well as harvesting the produce is greater than the value of the produce, thus leading for farmers to throw away the produce and not take it to the market. When the food goes into the landfill, it also emits a lot of greenhouse gases. In the climate crisis, every fraction of degree matters. So every action that makes the world a cleaner and a better place to live matters. So in the beginning, uh, friends and family were kind of like, fashion, really? You working in fashion? Then, or if you could introduce yourself and tell us what you do. Hi, my name is Ori Arconi and I'm CEO for Colorifics. In this industry, we're using over 70 highly toxic chemicals, over 30 of which are irretrievable, meaning if they end up in the water, they stay in the water and will end up in the ocean. It was startling to see so many of those chemicals came from textiles and specifically from making color and putting color onto fabric. Our population's increased by roughly a third over the last 25 years, and our consumption of clothing has gone up by 60% per person. So first we need to fix what we're doing wrong, and then we need to fix the damage that what that did. And I think it is possible, but only if people actually get up and do something rather than sit and be sad about it. Our modern way of life makes things easier, cheaper, and more convenient for us but it also creates a huge amount of waste, and that is destroying the planet. 
but there are solutions. By changing the way we manufacture, use and recycle products, we can dramatically lower our waste output and help life all over the planet. Clothing is a very personal thing. It's how you express yourself. It's the front cover of your, your book. And so if you're wearing clothing and it doesn't match your values, that's a problem. I'm the CEO of Cirque. We're aiming to solve the massive waste issue that clothing and fashion and textiles is generating today. Cirque's developed a solution that can recycle textiles. Specifically, we can reverse engineer them to their building blocks so they can be remade into new clothing over and over. Cirque can take that mountain of material that's currently going to landfill or incineration and run it through our process. We take that clothing material, we add water, temperature, pressure, some responsible chemistry, and then we essentially liquefy the polyester. And when we do that, we're able to separate it from the cotton. So now we have a liquid polyester stream and the cotton stream. The cotton stream, we clean up and regenerate into new yarns. And then from the liquid, we're able to extract and purify those building blocks that traditionally come from oil and gas, and then remake it back into new polyesters. So it can go right back into the beginning of the supply chain and we can keep using that material over and over so we can stop the extraction and we can stop the waste being burned or buried. We've recycled over 100 tons of waste textiles that was going to the landfill, and that saves 130,000 kilograms of CO2 that would have gone to the atmosphere. What inspired us to start S4S was when we saw how big the problem of food wastage was for smallholder farmers and how it was pushing them to be in poverty. S4S stands for Science for Society. We use scientific knowledge to solve some of the pressing challenges faced by the rural people of India. S4S collects this lower grade produce from smallholder farmers at the village level. The solar conduction dryer uses the power of sun. It uses three modes of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation, and dehydrates the produce in six to eight hours. The solar conduction dryer can handle wide variety of material, starting from fruits and vegetables, spices, pulses and grains, tea, coffee, milk, as well as meat produce. The solar conduction dryer helps remove the moisture from the food produce, extending the shelf life to 12 months. s prevents food from getting wasted at the source. We do quality control and make it fit for the use of the customer and dispatch it in bulk to various food and beverage industry customers. s works with 2,000 women entrepreneurs in six states of India. They take a loan from the bank and buy the patented technology of s s Women are now breadwinners in their family, and it gives them respect at home as well as in the society. Annually, S4S prevents more than 60,000 tons of food from getting wasted and more than 300,000 tons of CO2 from entering the environment. The planet benefits from reduced CO2 emissions, and the women benefit from assured additional income. Ever since an early age, probably around 15, I knew that DNA and understanding nature's language was, was the thing for me. How one set of instructions can do so many different things. I look at all the color everywhere and think, where does it come from? How is it made? It's really fascinating to see the elegant biochemistry behind it. Calorifics helps to build a waste-free world by changing dyeing from a chemical-intensive, water-intensive, and energy-intensive process to something that's biological and that takes place in a way that's very natural. Colorifics are using cutting-edge technology to change the way we dye our fabrics. By finding colors in nature, they add them to microbes which in turn produce pigments in a much more sustainable, much less polluting way than traditional dyeing methods. 
it's grown in a fermenter, much like the process of making beer, but instead of the alcohol, you're making pigment. Once it's making that color, it will divide and replicate itself every 20 minutes, so long as it has water, sugar, and nutrients, and keep producing that same color. So by using these engineered microorganisms, we get to dye at body temperature using less water. We're saving about 79% on water, almost 50% on energy, and over 30% on CO2 emissions for making the exact same color using the exact same machine in conventional dyeing versus colorifics dyeing. And we see that as quite important. Even if you have the solutions, if we don't put them in place in time, it's going to be over before we can start. And so it's really urgent that this and other technologies like it come to the forefront and get used and get support. These solutions have the potential to dramatically clean up our world. By our very nature, we will always have an impact on this planet. But it's up to us to change our wasteful practices into positive gains for life on Earth. It's not too late, but we urgently need many more solutions like these if we are to clean up our act and build a waste-free world. The linear way of doing things is not necessary anymore. There's a circular solution that is better that needs to be implemented now for a waste-free world. My sincere hope and belief is that we can work with nature to accelerate how it recovers. To anyone who thinks it's too late to make a difference, I would like to say that there are many innovative solutions out there and we need to deploy them at a faster rate. And for this, we need your help. We need new systems in place and new technologies so that we can have a waste-free world and a much safer planet.